eventually be watching this. This is the first stream that Ben and I are doing, and, uh, he seems to be a bit of a sleepy potato, so he might drop out on us at some point in the early stages of all of this. We are running Morrowind, mostly for the shits and giggles of it. I have not had an opportunity to mod it to the hell that I want to yet, but... <clears throat> give it some time, just trying to get some things working before we get the rest of the things working, and at that point I'll probably end up starting up a whole new campaign, so that'll be fun to watch too. I'll choose a different direction to run in. For context, it is now 142 ESD. He's allowed to be a sleepy potato. He keeps on thinking I'm giving him shit for being a sleepy potato, but the reality of it is, is that I understand why he's a sleepy potato. We're also going to go ahead and skip past the intro cutscene, because, whoops, I also pulled up the console by accident. I'm just glad you can actually skip the intro cutscene, because as far as I'm aware, in, in Oblivion, you can't? Uh, I do believe you actually can, it's just the back button instead of the start button, which is weird. They occasionally put it in inconvenient places so that you don't accidentally hit it, or so that you're kind of forced to think that you have to watch through their cutscenes. It's an interesting gimmick. Uh, what is our name going to be? We going with Tad again? Or we'll go with Tad again. Alright. The OG Tad. So, the first time I played Morrowind, um, nobody... I was told that you couldn't save, like you had to do to go to, like, oh, actual Jesus. save points. You were lied to. I think... Did I tell you the story? Okay, so I, I played through Quiet. in the beginning with the idea this that I could not save, good. that there's no quick Come save, and that I had to find a save point. Um... I'm not sure where exactly it is or what exactly it's called, but there's apparently a scroll in this game that basically launches you off the map. Ah, uh, yes. I kept repeatedly finding it, launching myself off the map, dying, and having to restart. That's it, unfortunate. I, I did not think I could yeah, save at the moment. <laughs> so, like... It, it was just bad. It was absolutely terrible. Head down to the dock. Because I keep forgetting about the scroll. Hmm. And I was just like, this looks neat. I'm gonna we use finally this. Arrive, but our records don't show from where. Yeah, no, I've, I've learned that, if anything, uh, Bethesda used to... Well, no, I guess they still do like trolling their audiences. These days, more so than usual. That's, that's true. There's our Agonian beauty. Let me make sure I actually get the right gender here because it's actually kind of difficult to tell. That's a cute fish daughter face. I mean, is there any real reason why there should be, like, you should be able to tell? Like... Well, I mean, they're a little bit more chesty, I suppose. I, I guess, but like... From the face, it's a little bit difficult. That's true. Also, it kind of, like, amuses me that the concept of lizard titties has been, like, a consistent thing in the Elder Scrolls Great. series. I'm sure you Always. Right like, there's absolutely no Call reason to give to lizards tits, but we keep doing it anyway. Well, it's the combination humanoid. All things humanoid have to genders usually and or have genitals relevant to right, so there's more. like I'm there's no grab some stuff. reason why things uh, should have yes, worked out this way expecting you uh, you have my to book, be recorded like, before you're officially released there are a few the ways concept of different playable races is, is cool yours. and all like the idea that you can play as an character how the fuck do you pronounce kaji is it kaji yeah Kaji. Kaji. Like, the idea that you play as an Argonian in a Ka or a Kaji is pretty cool, but the idea that anything would function, like, similar to human society or anatomy is kind of a long shoot. Do we want to make her a warrior or more of a thief? They don't do custom classes? I'm doing custom class right now. Ah. Uh. I could have answered his questions, but that seemed boring. 
I mean, it's up to you. I'm not particularly married to the idea of any particular class. Hey, you can still weigh in. This is as close to a cooperative one as it's probably going to get. I feel like stealth would be too stereotypy. I don't. I don't want to offend any of our audience. Like lizard people being sneaky. I mean, there's already prejudices against it in the Elder Scrolls series. The Kaji think that the Argonians are super sneaky, and like sly and dirty and. Is okay. So I I haven't played for Morrowind as an Argonian, but like. I guess we'll follow really under that. A net benefit. Like, like the benefits of being an Argonian in this game are not exactly the greatest. I, I mean, in all fairness, the race bonuses are not game-breaking. No, but they're also things that you can usually get through enchantments as well, like water breathing. You put that on a ring and you never have to worry about it again. We'll take agility and maybe speed or endurance. What do you think? Or personality. I don't really use personality that much. So, I mean, I don't. I mean, Speed, endurance, personality, or luck, those are the four that I'm struggling with right now. Any thoughts? Luck? It's a little bit of everything. Yeah. Kind of a long game type thing. I have no idea how more one plays in comparison to a Webby and Skyrim, That's so... okay. We'll take luck. The blessed, blessed fish daughter. the light. There it is. See, I'm kind of disappointed that we couldn't do our normal, like, horrifically deformed, um... It was back in the days before sliders were a thing. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> is the shore blade considered the dagger nowadays? Should we go with a dagger, or should we be a non-traditional thief? Huh. I mean, I feel like dagger's the way to go. Well, for crit rate, for sure. But I'm also... Eh, I guess. <laughs> I mean, we are honestly just starting out anyhow, so... It's not like anything's gonna be set in stone. Start with the things that work best for us. No, acrobatics. Hella acrobatics. And do for the our minor skills. Good. Uh, do the builds really matter in this game? No. It, well, yes and no. Uh, the builds are based around the notion that anything that you have as a major skill or a minor skill will end up being um, level upable quicker. Yes, level upable deal with it. Um, anything lower on the list is going to take more effort and time, and anything not on the list at all, as you can expect, would be, like, think of it as rates of, like, 1, 1 1.5, and 2 going up, so. I, I get the idea of, like, specific skills or qualities having, you know. Well, ultimately, as you were, I'm assuming, asking, it's not really important in that you can still level up literally everything else in the game to a point where it is just as well that you picked it as a starting skill. So you can become a master of all. But, I mean, like, is there builds that get you through the main quest line with the idea? 
You get what I'm saying. Like, is there, like, an efficiency build here, or are we just, like... Oh, absolutely. We're not doing it, though. We're, we're just basically creating a character based on, I suppose... I would say established personality, but, you know, I like giving my characters personalities. some alteration because that's great for thieves illusion because that's great for thieves so we decide on a thief build for the time being yes <coughs> that's how we're starting things out we'll take a little bit of mysticism for that telekinetic ability and uh, probably it's a toss-up between resto and alchemy I mean, I'm not usually much for the alchemy end of things in these games, but I'll, I'm willing to try. Having a heal spell is just usually more convenient. Now, we need a name for our adventurer class. High class. I was just thinking the fish daughter. Ah, oh, that's fair. If any of you are sitting in here waiting for a speedrun to happen, let me tell you now, you are going to be extremely disappointed. You are along for a journey, my friends. So, what race benefits bonuses do we get? The major one is water breathing. That's the one that I normally am a huge fan of. Outside of that, I'm trying to remember most of it. I believe are stats. There might be one more thing that ends up being more a passive end of. Don't think of poison resistance. It's a very likely possibility. Yeah, I'll be able to find out soon. Invisibility could be nice. too much once, uh, once we get our sneak up a little ways. Okay, I think... Maybe the tower? What does the tower do again? I, I it, vaguely remember. It basically gives you a detect spell within 200 feet of yourself, so uh, animals, um, which I think include people, enchantments, so magical items, or keys, which again, chests, all wonderful things, and then it has a follow-up power key, or power, called the tower key. And it'll allow you to open up to the average chest on touch. Mm -hmm. I'm about it. I think it's a once a day thing. Yeah, it's but like a daily spell. I'm cool with it being a daily spell because eventually I'll be able to make one of my own that'll do better. Yep. See, that's the one thing I didn't like about dailies is that, like, there gets a, to be a point in the game where pretty much anything they give you is going to be about the equivalent of stuff you can already do. That's true, except for it's just nice to have as an option, especially if you want to maintain or conserve something. <coughs> well, I understand that. I feel like it would be a lot nicer if, like, you know, class bonuses, race bonuses, the um, kind of weird horoscope bonus they give you actually affected the game long term, like, noticeably affected the game. Yeah, I mean, to have it scale with you would be nice, but that's asking more for a modder's hand than the developers, because that's usually quite a bit to consider, especially if you want to keep it balanced. And we have our first dagger, ladies and gentlemen.
Thankfully, it was nice of them to just throw that at us. Well, let's put some shoes. Oh, wait, that's right where I go in. We don't believe in shoes. Second, gotta make some adjustments to buttons real quick. So basically, oh, I see. Weak. Okay. Okie dokie. I am going to have to make a whole lot of changes at a later time and date. Well, that's not going to fly. Why are you all just numbers? You're supposed to be other buttons. That's fair to a degree, but it's actually extremely comfortable. Is it? Oh, yeah. Can you explain to me? Okay, so the only familiarity I have with this concept was when I was playing TF2. Hmm? Because, and oh my god, this was years ago. Um, I would play TF2 as a sniper, hmm? and I'd have the controller for literally anything else. It was just because it adds that extra layer of precision, but I can't imagine that you really need that in Elder Scrolls. Like, any of the games whatsoever, I feel like you don't need to be that precise, even if you're using a bow. But that's just me. Like, I don't understand the appeal of using a keyboard and mouse over a controller if you're not going for that precision. It's not always just the keyboard and mouse as in the mouse being the reliant end of things. It's having the access to the full menu at your fingertips. You can do much more with a keyboard than you can with a controller just based on the number of buttons that you've got. <coughs> That's fair. I guess it just feels more ergonomic to me at this point. Just because I've played primarily on controllers for most of the titles that I've played, like, they're, well, for most of them, there's no other option. Yeah, no, they'll occasionally try and force you into following what they tell you to. The idea of, like, playing Smash, or Smash at all with a keyboard is hilarious. And yet, I think I know someone who might be willing to do that. You do, too. out of ah no this is where I was supposed to go what up homie so what's the plot line Morrowind versus the rest of the games you know I really haven't gotten that far into it but uh, seriously yeah no Morrowind was one of the ones that I didn't really touch that far on which is why one of my first experiences I wanted to have it so heavily modded visually mind you I feel like <coughs> raw playthrough is best on, like, pretty much any game before you start modding it, though. See, that's the beauty of Bethesda games, though, is because they end up spending so much time working on the mods for the game by the time that you get around to the game. <clears throat> Especially in cases like Morrowind having been out and been so popular for so very long, is that there's a more complete version of the game that exists out there. That's you. And... That can only be achieved through the modding community, which is why a lot of the packs have a tendency of coming with, like, the bare essentials that you need to actually play through the game. You don't think it's kind of bizarre that, you know, you have to heavily mod a game before you, it's, it's 
playable? Based on how old the game is, I'd say no. Like, a lot of the... A lot of the mods are really just graphical improvements, like lighting, or shadows, or how characters walk around so that they're not so stiffly animated, or that the armor actually looks like armor as opposed to this. Like, the way the characters in this game turn is at super sharp angles. No human being on the face of the planet would ever do that. Yeah, but are you... Is the appeal of the Elder Scrolls series, like, that level of immersion, or is the appeal the gameplay? It's largely the immersion, moreover, than the gameplay, because of... Uh... It's largely Let's more so the fact that the game kind of forces you to play in such a way that you can't really break immersion. Uh, every game after Morrowind in the Elder Scrolls series, and in fact, I'd say Oblivion was one of the ones who pioneered this, uh, had a fast travel. Based on the general massive complaint, because you're always going to have people out there who appreciate games for what they are and what they try to be, and then you're going to you're going to have the people who are pampered and want to uh, you know find a quick way through shit. Fast travel only came about around Oblivion's time. Until then, the concept of even running, like if you watch now, I am currently walking. This is not my full run speed. Okay. And the reason for that is. If I start running, it starts using my stamina. If I start using my stamina, <coughs> as with all the other Elder Scrolls games, if you run out of stamina and get yourself into combat, you're going to get hit, you're going to fall over, they are going to eat you alive. Does, it, does running level up anything, like jumping does? Uh, yes. Acrobatics in this game are actually way more satisfying. Acrobatics and athletics will increase your speed and your ability to jump and or climb shit. So, level 100 acrobatics means that you can find one of those stupid mountains that you'd normally hate trying to climb over, but you're insistent on doing it because it's absolutely a shortcut. Kind of like this guy over here. And... In essence, at level 100 acrobatics, I would literally be able to just walk straight up a 90 degree angle to get to the top of this. That's kind of ridiculous. It's the part of these games that I love, when the stats actually mean something. just randomly starts screaming and then we take his outfit after he tells us that in this book he's apparently completed a teleport spell essentially cool stuff is he's got some nice toys and a silly hat and I'm all about silly hats did he kill himself this time? I think he was killed oh wow I Spell? Maybe not a teleport spell per se, but <clears throat> he's got three scrolls here called Akirian Flight and Oh no 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 I see. It's exactly what you were talking about before. Yeah, you you're not no. It's uh, not yet. It'll be useful when I have Featherfall. Yeah. I mean you could save the game and attempt to use it, but it's just going to kill you. Yeah, the idea of fortifying acrobatics to a thousand I've seen used in certain instances, mostly in speedruns of the game, and uh, usually their health is high enough to compensate for it. <coughs> I know better than to go flying through the air.
you know, technically, like, the way that the Kyrian Flight works, it is a teleport spell. You're In tele- a sense, yeah. You're just kind of teleporting vertically. Mm-hmm. And, like, instead of an instant here and there thing, it's, it's, it's just you flinging yourself into the air. That's a damn teleportation, right? That counts? I suppose. Apparently, I did not get around this little bugger, so we are now going to have our first fight, nice. officially. You ever see those, um, I don't even know what to call them, like, you ever hear, like, the discussions of, like, okay, you're, you have superpowers, but they just suck, like, in a particular way, like, the idea of immortality, that whole trope of, like, being immortal and watching your friends die around you? Yeah. Oh, by the way, this is uh, probably one of the worst spots to come across in the early stages of the game because the guys in there are not, definitely not low enough level, which is another reason why I love Morrowind. There is no real sense of scaling, per se. It's, you have to find shit that you can actually kill for levels. Yeah. <clears throat> they don't really hold your hand or carry you through it. that's basically similar to the concept of not scaling, where if you follow what you're supposed to be doing, it's never an issue, but if you don't, you kind of quickly screw yourself over. Yeah, it's supposed to open up after a little while. Well, yeah, once you get to the point where you can actually successfully take down a death claw, like, you can pretty much make it anywhere, but, like, during the beginning, when you're kind of just wandering around and you have to pass the tracks, I mm. think I think that's where it is because there's a death claw next next to the tracks, and they're like, yeah, you're not really supposed to go there, but we're not going to actually physically stop you. Like, you get stopped, but it's not like it's like a hey, we're going to let you know not to do this, but you're going to have to learn by making your own mistakes. Yeah. It's a good system. This one doesn't do it quite like that. It's more along the lines of the fact that, like, here, you go from point A to point B. Hey, look, a little side cave for you to go and explore. Get fucked. It's like a level 50 red guard. I feel like Morrowind is much more cruel and capricious as, like, demonstrated by the whole flight thing. Like, they just don't care. Like, there's no... There is no reason for you to believe that that scroll would intentionally kill you? Like, well, there is actually one clean indicator. The, the dead guy, yeah. I, I get that he's dead. And the fact that you hear him screaming before you actually see him. Playing devil's advocate here. Mm-hmm. Like, there is... You, you did not see him fall, as far as I understand. Like... He could have just been randomly murdered. Like, Morrowind is not a very forgiving place. No, but that was part of the reason why people loved it so much. The immersion was built around the idea that the game was not crafted in such a way that you follow a set progression. It was crafted in such a way that you are basically given a safe spot to hop into and then go and explore the world. And the world will be built however it will be built regardless of your personal feelings or how badly you don't want your ass having a Warhammer jammed up it. <clears throat> Sorry, I have a lot of uh, resentment towards that red guard in the cave that we just passed. If I have the same feeling as I have about that scroll? That would almost be fair. I feel like you would have had the sense to save first. Like, out of anyone? No, no. This early in the game, you're allowed to make those mistakes, regret them, and then have to do stuff again. I mean, without the texture mods and everything, it isn't exactly as easy to say, but really the design of 
this game was actually beautiful, and it does sort of lend credit towards the reason why they don't want you running or sprinting literally everywhere you go. Well, that's my point. Like, that's why I feel like when it comes to games like this, you're better off doing a raw run of it. Like, the way I say it is a completely different genre of game. But it's like going back and playing Red and Blue on an old school Game Boy with the batteries and the cartridges and everything. Like, there's there's a feel to it that you don't quite get when you run, like, an emulator and you can put up, you know frames per second or whatever controls your ability to run like it's there's there's credit to be had of going through the game a second or third or god knows how many times um and being able to mod it so the things that were inconvenient on your first run are no longer inconvenient but taking away the opportunity to enjoy like the game as it was meant to be played See, that's the thing, though. The mods... The mods split up. There are certain things that are meant to take away from the original design of the game, but the texture mods, the aesthetic mods, the music mods, they don't really so much change anything as they do... What would be a good word for it? They enhance the developer's original intention using tools that are now more relevant and powerful than they were when this game came out. They don't change necessarily anything about the game aside from how it looks, which is... looks and sounds, I suppose. Which is, uh, not exactly the worst thing in the world. Mission. Let's see. Okay, I'm listening. I think these guys are supposed to give me a quest to go clear out their mines, but they don't seem to want to, so instead I'm going to go take a pickaxe and make that little detour. Not having a heal spell is going to come back to bite me. I feel like that should probably be top priority. You would think so, but fortunately, foods and things of that assortment are pretty okay. I am super amused that it's playing in like 4 3 resolution. Like, I recognize that that would be what it's supposed to be, but. Yeah, reason why mods are a thing. get as much out of this as we can. Wow, that went well. Apparently they really don't like daggers. What's up? It's been kind of a dying 
Messenger for a very long time now. What really upset me was when uh, Facebook decided to be ass douches and make it so that Pigeon could no longer run your Facebook Messenger because that was that was a fun way of detaching yourself from Facebook without detaching yourself from the okay, he's big. His old friend found me. Uh, no, not necessarily, I don't think. He's gonna be behind me and I know it. Where is he? Where is that colossal motherfucker? Okay, he's walking away. <coughs> go exactly how I was, I was expecting it to, but then again, I guess I'm getting a little bit too used to playing Oblivion and the various other things. Hi, buddy. Something tells me you're not going to be a friendly sort. Just a random dude in the cave, like, give the benefit of the doubt. I believe they're poachers. Considering that I'm poaching eggs right now? Yeah. Well, I'll grant you. But I don't do this as a consistent form of money making. It's more along the lines of the fact that I'm here and they're probably not paying me. And while I'm not super keen on the idea of taking everything from this cave, and I probably won't, and I probably just got stuck, which is messy at best. Well, oh, this is a problem. Hey, there we go. Maybe. Maybe. That was weird. But you know what? I'll take it. Can I get to you without you being mad at me? Oops. You bear. I buzzed up. Fight you, dude. Uh, <coughs> do I have anything for this yet? I don't want to kill you. Not that it's going to matter because he's probably going to kill me, which, you know, great considering that I haven't saved yet. That's why I'm kind of booking it. You might want to heal too. I don't know what I exactly. don't think I have anything to heal with in this moment. Oh, that's going to suck for you. Yeah, well. I'll find something. We so dead. All right. So, uh, I forgot the crouching ends up initiating stealing, which is not what I was going for, but here we are. Oh, wait, that's right, I have that stupid ring. Uh, magic. Nope, I want that equipped. Uh, do I cast spells? I don't remember. There we go. This is not going to be worth much. <coughs> and my ring is useless. Alright, so let's go do other dumb things instead. Let's go take out the big thing. that you 
are not familiar with Morrowind's story, considering you're probably, you have more reason to be more familiar with Morrowind than I do. I don't know if he's aware of me yet. I don't... He doesn't even, Is it aggressive? I'm not sure. He doesn't seem to care about me. That's good. I imagine as long as I don't touch the eggs, he'll be cool. I wonder if they're going to start getting aggressive as I get closer to the queen. Maybe. Looks like. Oh. Uh, maybe not. It looks more like this guy's just being a jerk. No, no, no. no. This is one of the poachers, I believe. Fortunately, I actually saved, though I do want to find a better way of healing. I'm wondering if I just wait. Is that an option that I can do? How do I rest? R? No, it's not R. What button's rest? T. Yeah, that makes sense. Last 12 hours. Oh, hello. Until healed. Yes, please. That's a bit of a game changer on how I approach everything afterwards. I forgot that that was the thing. Oh, buttons block. There used to be a way. I don't know if it's in Oblivion or Beyond, but. If you block attacks and keep on trying to talk to the person instead, they might forgive you for trying to do something that you shouldn't have done. Maybe not. <clears throat> I might just have to kill this guy. Or get 
get stuck underneath, I suppose. And the intense music stopped, and it started back up again. Alright, dude. Alright. I'd like to talk to you. Characters in combat, characters in combat, whatever. Fine, you wanna die? I can kill you. You happy? You don't even have anything that I'd want. Ugh. I'm sorry I killed your friend. Okay, I'm listening. So you had nothing new to add? That's okay, fine. I'm listening. I apologize, I'll put it back down. I didn't realize it was stealing at the time. They really don't make that clear a lot of the time, I've noticed. No, I just picked something up and both of them shouted out guards at the same time. Thankfully, there are no guards here. So, good news. Should be bossy. Try and kill me because I attacked the script. No. Okay. Things could be going worse. Let's do a little bit of resting until healed. Here comes friends looking to fight. Through the door. Can they do that? 
in Oblivion and onward they can. I don't think that's a thing in... Uh, but they do heal, however. So, not so much when I leave the room, I think it's when I'm resting. They do get time to rest. So if I'm lucky, I can get one kill off, though it's not seeming like I'm going to be super lucky. Because movement speed in this game is a bit rough. I'm actually going to one-up my game a little bit and swap over to the enchanted sword for the purpose of taking out these guys. but I'm not hitting with it anywhere near enough, so that plan's out the window. Oh, crap! What the what? I'm gonna die. I think it's someone from the Assassin's Guild. What? Assassin's Guild? Oh, yeah. Dark Brotherhood? Well, I know the Dark Brotherhood, but, like... specifically, like, go after you in this game? Uh, apparently there's a bounty on your head, yes. I would have found out about that had I actually successfully killed the dude. I did not successfully kill the dude. I do not. That much time in? Yeah, even then. It's not supposed to be a super hard fight. It's like they send one of their fucking novices after you or some nonsense, but... So I'm not able to actually get in there right now, which is distressing. But it's basically, it'll happen randomly after you rest out in the open. That seems like a weird trigger for that event. Well, again, the immersion aspect of it is that it shouldn't happen every single time in the third or fourth time you decide to rest. When they show up is based almost entirely on... Oh, no, that's right. It's after you kill an innocent. And I accidentally killed an innocent. This little fella right here. No, I just accidentally tried to pickpocket him, and then he proceeded to try and kill me for it. Which is fair. It is, even though I didn't actually take anything from him, and that I would have apologized should the game have given me that opportunity. I mean, if I come up to you and, like, shove my hands into your front pocket... And, this is like, closer to, like, wallet. if you randomly come up to me, trip, stumble, and then fall onto me with your hand landing directly into my pocket, and then went, oh, I'm sorry about that, that was my bad. <clears throat> I mean... Well, the situation will be weird, but I wouldn't want to kill you for it. That's fair. place. We'll come back here sometime in the future. The workers are getting piled up. No, I actually haven't touched any of the workers. They're the docile ones. Scribs and the 
Kwama uh, larvae or whatever the hell they are. Those guys are aggressive to me. But it's all little guys. The warriors would be too, but I'm not going near the warriors because I don't feel like dying over and over again. Alright, let's head back on our trek to the north. Next encounter, vampires. Vampirism in Morrowind is both broken and or annoying as hell. How so? Uh, the downsides to it are dramatically more brutal than they were in Oblivion. I don't know if you ever got vampirism in any of the Elder Scrolls games. I don't think I did. I might have. Usually in Oblivion when you... Oh god, is there a rack or something? That might not be the name. Um, usually when you get vampirism in Oblivion or Skyrim, it has a series of, like, random negative effects. They're not exactly the most devastating negative effects in the world. It's mostly, like, a reduced strength, or, uh, reduced defense, or movement speed, or this, that, or the other. But in, uh, Morrowind, when you are cursed with vampirism, being out in the sunlight is, like... 1% HP per second. Oh shit. Yeah, that would be bad. Is that supposed to be for me? Yeah? Weird. What is that supposed to be my hack on now? Okay. It's a good start. I don't know what I actually want, but... I like it. Oh god. There's another nightmare place. You think... You think dealing with the equivalent of rats and a couple random miners... Slash poachers... Huh. We're bad. I can't even remember the name of this place. I just remember the name of it being terrifying. I've been here before. I don't remember going in, but... Yep. Darsis Ancestral Tomb. That means that there's going to be ghosts, and I do not have a single silver item on me. <clears throat> Magic spells won't work? Uh, I went predominantly thief build. I'm pretty sure the only magic that I have comes in the form of killing myself, a sword, and a healing ring. you know, cool, but, eh? Wait, did you mention a sword? Because I couldn't get over the fact that, like, the first thing you listed off is basically just suicide. Um, yeah, there's a sword that has a magic enchantment on it. Unfortunately, my ability to use long blades is so weak that the game does not actually take hits. Which is another one of the things the mods end up fixing. It actually does hits based on where you swing and a relevant, like, scaling. Like, you can still miss a point-blank hit, but there's more to it than that. Am I, uh... Oh, I'm at Balmora already? Sweet. This was supposed to be my next stop. What button is jump again? E. That's silly. Let me swap those buttons around real quick. Jump is space, because modern day, and interact or use, that should be, Talk to me.
So I figure we should join up with at least temporarily the Mages Guild. It seems like that would help in our thievery and or class selection. I feel like considering the glass problem you brought up, that would be helpful. If I recall correctly, everything that I end up looking up here ends up getting added to a list. Not that I remember where that would be. Spells? Oh, no, journal. So if I need to find anything later, as long as I get the actual conversation out of the way, I can cross-reference with everything over here. Don't press your luck. You're on the honor. Which conversation? Any conversation. Uh, if you have a conversation with someone, they'll normally tell you about stuff which expands upon things that... Ah, uh, I see. I'm not allowed to actually rest Oh, here. wait. So, when you have a conversation with somebody in the game, it actually lets you access that war later on? Yeah, yeah. Like, uh, for instance, I just talked with her about Balmora, right? <clears throat> okay. All of the information that she discussed on Balmora. The beautiful thing is, is that they have links in them, so... Whoops. Don't press is, this, is that just a feature of Skyrim? Uh, or Marlene? Never noticed? It's a possibility. Most of the time, it's not really relevant. But, yeah, anything that's listed as blue here opens up a whole new dialogue, and if it's something that's relevant to the game long run, it's going to keep track of it for you. Is there a button for resting versus waiting? and bustle is going on. But we have to clear a certain distance from town, otherwise resting here is illegal. So we're going to try seven hours. Look at that walk animation, though. You see what I'm talking about? It's super... Uh... That's an Argonian. That is... Do you understand now why mods exist for this shit? That's fair. <clears throat> Come on, Hull, talk to me. Like, I feel like the person who animated the walk cycle in this game does not understand how bipeds walk? Mmm, it's a strong possibility. Summoned by 
I remember if they still count it as stealing if you're taking it from inside of the crates that are outside, unattached to anything. It doesn't actually mark items that would be theft. I think they only mark them once you got them in your inventory. Well, that's the thing. That's how this game is played, which is what makes it so immersive. It There is no racing through this game. Like, well, that's not true at all. The world record on this game is like six minutes. But if you're not cheating, there's no racing through this game. Or exploiting? Eh, whichever. Do I have money? Stop being so pushy. I think I have some money. Not enough. That's okay. Actually have time for alchemy, now is not that time, so sell everything for sweet, sweet loots. that is worth my time. The answer is a fairly whopping no, it seems. That's okay. You're just not the person I want to talk to. I really need to remember that I swapped those buttons.
this is the office that I'm supposed to go to. Oh no, wait, this is the Strider office, isn't it? Oh no, it's a pawnbroker. Cool. I wonder if she'd get mad at me for raiding him. Is it? I mean. You can read books without taking them. I love the fact that they put so much effort into these. The books, yeah. <coughs> we need like a collection of Argonian maid. No, uh, yeah. It's, the lusty Argonian maid. Yes. Um. You know what I find really amusing? Hmm. Supposedly, it, with books in this game, because you can get a house in this game eventually, right? Uh, a handful, I believe. Yeah. Um, apparently, when you shelve things, it's way more organized than Skyrim. Oh, yeah. Like, you're just, your house can just go to shit in Skyrim, and Morrowind, apparently, not so much. Yeah, they did a little bit better on it here. I don't know why, but... Maybe they cared more back then. Fair. <coughs> I'm really glad they gave us a dagger in the very beginning because I'm having a lot of difficulty finding better ones. Shut up. They're all so mean. Doesn't help terribly that my uh, dagger's durability is going to shit either. Should probably buy a small collection of weapons. What kind of armor do you have? Alright, that I think takes care of that. Now for our weapon selection. Alright. Good enough. 
maybe now you won't be such a jerk to me. Let's re-equip ourselves to be all fanciful. Of course we can't. I'm just selling that right back to you. Boy, are there any other helmets here that were worth using? A Nordic iron helmet, I suppose, but that's not really... Something that we'd have any luck with. It's a heavy armor piece, so I guess we're going without that for now. That's okay. I think our character can wear boots. I thought you were joking about that before? No, shoes definitely are a no-go. Really? Yeah, yeah. Huh. Okay. I guess. Pretty much. I'm probably gonna try anyhow. Looks like I'm probably going to try one of these other helmets. So let's see, I'll take that. <coughs> Beast races cannot wear boots. Seems like that's a period end of story type situation. 
Apparently this counts as a full helmet too. What doesn't count as a full helmet, I wonder. stuff again. So way less than I got it for. Kind of love how we immediately put on the thing that I sold in Okie doke. <clears throat> I don't remember if it's as much a thing in this game. I feel like I should probably be sneaking for this bit. Probably. grind sneak in this game like you would uh, in Oblivion? Uh, I think you should be able to, realistically. I'm thinking about doing it, but I'd have to first set it to toggleable, I suppose, and that seems like a kind of lame thing to do when it's recording. <clears throat> I'll do that when we're just idling around. No one has to sit around and watch us grind sneak. find something fancy in here. So, seeing as we completely skip the introduction, are you following the main quest line at all? As of this moment, no. Like, I'm kind of going to the first place that they want me to, I think. But, Hundred percent sure. Don't they have quest markers? Hmm? Aren't there quest markers? <coughs> um Not as much as you might think. all of our secondary skills fall under magic anyhow. Hurry this up, will you? She must not be the person to talk to for this.
I'm actually surprised it would came across, despite the weird character walk cycles and the subpar graphics, how well this game actually holds up. Oh yeah. It's a very unique blend of game. You can't really find this basically anywhere else. Another, another drink thing. But, um... Yeah, this is one of those ones that should have been the defining point in Bethesda's whole crusade and what could have ended up making the concept of open world, open world games something incredible and something that would have been <clears throat> almost exclusively them for a good long while. Let's see if I can test this theory out. We so dead. And I just got blown up. That went about as well as I expected it to. That's what I get for stealing a $6,000 soul gem. some random toys and such.
take a lot more time earning some money. My patience is limited. selling shit that I just stole from them straight back to them. Don't they mark it stolen? Do you want me to go over this? I don't think so. Maybe. I'm not really 100% sure. Yeah, I think well, this person in particular apparently does not buy books, so that's fine. Hold up, this is everything. Like pretty much everybody in the game buy anything? No. Uh, certain vendors, crafters, so on <laughs> and so forth will only buy uh, the items that they work in. Seems like an appropriate spell for an Argonian. So what do you want? Alrighty, so we have a basic duty to go find mushrooms. Hello, the likes. Nice. Words. Something like that. Sorry, stranger. My time is short, so get... Person that I want to talk to for selling books.
to 94 gold. Let's do a little bit more exploring of the town before we call it. money that I had, if I repaired everything right now, I would be in pretty bad shape, but even the two things that I did repair ended up costing me quite a bit. Oh well. Cost of being an adventurer. This is probably where I'm supposed to go. person that I'm looking for. I 
dynamic shadows, though. Don't press your luck. You're on My time. time. South Wall Corner Club, good news. <clears throat> Don't stand about, get moving. Stranger, my time is short, so Huh. <clears throat> so we name our character Tad, right? And it turns out that if you join Thieves Guild, your starting rank is Toad.
Thieves Guild as well as the Mages Guild. Summoned by another. Questions again. steal this loot because it looks awesome. Let's hear. This seems like a good place to stop. We found the guy that we're looking for. We're gonna rob him blind eventually, but in the meantime, this is it for us. I believe in you. Have a good night, everyone.